to see um been waiting and waiting for this because again pissing down all the time so today it's uh it's about 15 degrees it's slightly overcast there's a lot of chemtrails and a lot of plastic shit been dropped on us but i can see a hint of blue <laughs> so come on let's get rambling Long walk this one, loads to see. So uh, over and out, let's get amongst it. I've had a look as well driving through. They were queuing up for chips and lard at half past ten. <laughs> Greedy bastards. Open a chippy, Yorkies are straight there, aren't they? Not Yorkies, they call them um, Chizits. Chizits, Chizits and Comforts. Yeah, Chizits. Uh, comforts, because the Comfort Weekend. Ah, the Comfort Weekend. And Chizits, because they ask, how much is it? <laughs> so let's get amongst the Comforts and Chizits. First part of call, Ross Castle. Fucking hell, Cleethorpe has got a castle. Oh, yes. Come on. Oh, noddy trains in. Mud's out. All right, first port of call, me old comfies. Oh, it's blowing a bit. So, first port of call, Seaview Street back there. Got me a research. And the first port of call today is Ross Castle. What's Ross Castle match? Thanks for asking. Let's have a gleg at it. That is Ross Castle. Yeah. Now, at first sight, Ross Castle appears to be the ruins of an ancient castle. But no, it is in fact a purpose-built Victorian folly. What the fuck's a folly? <laughs> and it was built by the railways um, to prevent the continuing coastline erosion of the cliffs. Uh, and it was a mock ruin for a visitor attraction. And it was built by Edward Ross, hence it been a Ross Castle. And it's said that the views from the top of Ross Castle are described as wonderful. So, hey, come on, let's go have a walk. Ross Castle. And then I've got to tell you something about this embankment as well. On the way back down, let's go have a walk. Ross Castle. I go down the steps to go up the steps. Choose right. Oh, hey, it's not a bad old view, though, is it? Flat as a witch's tit. If you remember, in the last episode, that was uh, over there, the pier. Papa's fish and chips. But anyway, let's keep going round and round. Fucking hell, it's like queuing up at a bank. Been to a few castles in my time. And this is possibly the least impressive. In fact, we're at the top. So, the view was described as wonderful. Um. I'd say it's all right. It's not a bad day for it, but it's not wonderful, is it? It's just, uh, it's Cleethorpes. Yeah, it's Cleethorpes. Hey, yeah, uh, we've got a shitload of walking to do today, but hopefully, fingers crossed, 
because I've got arthritis, there'll be a nice little boozer open halfway. Come on, let's get off Ross Castle. Very disappointing. But I need to tell you about that embankment down there. Found out something this morning that's quite shocking. So I was talking to my life coach all the way. Oh yeah, I've got a life coach. Yeah, you always need a life coach who's older than you because they've done shit. It serves you fucking up doing it yourself. And he was telling me, he says, where are you going? I says, I'm off Cleggy to do part two. He says, Ross Castle. He says, oh. He says, back in the day, he said he was on a stack do. And he got off with a beautiful maiden. A bit of a pig, probably. Uh, because she was quite loose with her sexual favours. And this is where they made love. At the side of Ross Castle, on the embankment, the grassy area. And I says, who was in front? Because that's just fucking fraught with danger, isn't it? Trying to hang out the back of somebody there. <laughs> anyway, uh, that was that. He distinctly remembers it because it was on a stag do. <clears throat> and that's when stag do's were proper. The fucking night before they got married. None of this two months before. Let's go on a golf golfing holiday to fucking Benidorm or something. No, you went to Cleggy and you tried to get off with who you could and hopefully didn't get the itchy little fellas downstairs a week later. So yeah, that was my life coach. Making sweet love to a beautiful maiden on that grassy embankment. And I can't tell you who his name is because you'd know straight away. Horrible Bob. Over and out. See that over there? That. That. I saw. Replaced. Originally, the Olympia. Latterly, the Winter Gardens. Fucking great place. What a history. Here's a little bit for you. So, it was an amusement hall. Uh, in the 1920s, started out as an Art Deco called Art Deco style called the Olympia in 1934, and it was built by a local railway worker, George Eyre. Get this right. So George Eyre, come back in the room. So George Eyre was a railway worker, and he had an accident and lost both his fucking legs. And instead of just moping and thinking, wow, how shit is life? With the compensation, he built the Olympia, which was brilliant. And then it was reopened. It was used in the war to house troops that were landing out there. Uh, and in 1947, it was replaced and re, uh, it reinvented itself as the Winter Garden the legendary Winter Gardens. Here's a list of people who played at the Winter Gardens. ACDC, Black Sabbath, The Clash, Dex's Midnight Runners, Dr. Feelgood, The Damned, Free, Genesis, The Hamsters, Hawkwind, wow, Elton John, Judas Priest, Susie Quattro, <laughs> my first ever wet dream, uh, Queen, Roxy Music, the fucking Sex Pistols, there, Taste, Rory Gallagher, Thin Lizzy, but lastly, if you needed a reason not to fucking knock the place down, the world famous 1993 saw the legendary performance of the world famous vocal stylist, independent filmmaker, Guru, an all-round lover, dreamer, stroke, shaman. Mash Baxter performed at the Winter Gardens. Oh, so paint a picture. The Winter Gardens, every Wednesday, was known the world over, and it was called the Bags Ball. Grab a granny, shag a slag, do a dog. Whatever it had various names, but it was the Bags Ball, and it's where uh, it's where the local ladies uh, put their finest Chelsea girl outfits on, 
spread a bit of tweed. <laughs> um, they didn't take the tags off because they needed to take them back as long as you didn't spill um, Perno and Black down the front of it. So they've come there, and this is before the day when you had tags on or any of that shit, um, and they'd drink Blastaways and Diamond Whites, and then they'd, uh, they'd try to get off with um, a contractor. Yeah. So they'd latch on to the nearest far away from home contractor who just found, probably married as well, who just fancied emptying the old chucky sacks. So they'd go back to the contractors uh, if he was quite well off. His digs would be eight pounds a night, including breakfast and plastic sheets. <laughs> uh, so they'd go back to his B&B for a dose of bed lice. Yeah, and in return they would give him crabs, or at least a pretty horrific STD, which are now replaced by STIs, I believe. But yeah, it was demolished in 2007, and the history of that place, even right, why this would happen, and this happened quite a lot, even Red Rum made a guest appearance. Who the fucking hell's going to turn up to see a horse in a nightclub? <laughs> I mean, I've come across a lot of horses in nightclubs and various pigs as well. But not a fucking real one with hooves and shit. But just to go back, um, I tip my hat to you, George Eyre. Yeah, lost both his legs, compensation, fuck it. I'm building a place for people to enjoy themselves. In a little while, George, I'm going to raise a pint of tramp juice to you, sir. The world needs more people like you. Let's move on. Check this out. Look at that. That is magnificent. <laughs> Let's go have a closer look. It's on the back of the old Viking, Cleggy. Superb. Comes with its own live litter picker as well. How good is that? I vis viv. <laughs> Shame he parked there because you're not getting the full enormity of it, are you? But yeah, that's on the back of the old Vic, right in Cleggy Centre. That is so, so good. I'll, uh, I'll bang a bit of info on it later because it's not been 100% received favourably. But I really like that. All hand done. How good is that? I can't even do a fucking stick, man. Look at that. Although, I don't know whether that acute angle represents him stood upright because his, his shadow is pretty much correct. But he's a bit oh, wibbly wobbly there. Pretty good though. Pretty good starter for 10. Come on, shit loads to see. And because I've lost all this weight, I can have a spam of chips and beans with scraps on a tray. <laughs> Still here. Look at this. Wow. I'll show you a picture also of what it used to be like. So this, back in the day, was Cleethorpe's outdoor Lido. I mean, it just looks like a haven of Veruca possibilities, doesn't it? But honestly, built in the summer of 1925, just off Kingsway, it was officially out to the public and enjoyed by thousands over 50 years. And then a violent storm trashed the place in 1978 and it was demolished in 81. I spent so many, so many happy seconds here back in the day. Yeah, your parents used to sit there all around this sort of amphitheatre and in the corner there used to be, somewhere over there, there used to be a mangle where you could take your trunks off 
your woolly trunks and your S belt <laughs> and put it through a mangle while uh, teasing the paedophiles or anybody who happened to be working for the BBC social services or the local police force. Yeah, lakeside. There you go, beautiful. They're just cleaning it around ready for the season. As if you're gonna fucking put a kid in there. <laughs> oh, memory lane. Happy days. Look at that seagull on the wall, look. They've even got art now. They're involving art. Come on. Can you hear that? Seagulls and ducks. Lions, bears. Oh, what's to come? Let's get going. See you later, Lido. <laughs> Beautiful. Just queued up for 10 minutes for an ice cream. No fucker came to the counter. You know it won't work. But I tell you what, this is an absolute, it's not even a hidden gem, but hardly anybody uses it. It's an ace place. This is the boating lake heading towards Beachcomber. Look at it. Gorgeous. It's got upside down swans. Aren't they? All right, oh. Just a lovely, lovely place. It's got fishing, you can go boating. And I noticed as well, just around the corner there, there's a little hut. Um, twice a week during the summer months, they have um, the model boat sailing. How good is that? If you're, not if you're not familiar with people who sail model boats, they're called um, single. Yeah, or still live with a mum. <laughs> oh, look at these beasts. Look at them, they're having a bit of a clean. Just having a nice day, aren't you? All right, I'm not gonna piss you off. Don't worry, don't start with your fucking spitting. Otherwise, I'll give you to the big-eared king and he'll have you on his fucking plate for Sunday dinner. Oh, that's a big one. That's the biggest one I've ever seen. Oh, it's a boat. All right, black-headed duck. Look at that. Oh, this looks like a better place. Right, don't forget the ice cream. I'm excited! So you come off the boating lake, walk up, walk up there, yeah? And look where you come to. Get ready for this. Look at that! What an oasis, what a haven! Look at it! The smallest pub on the planet. Which I'm going to tell you all about in a little while, but fuck that. Because I know in there, they sell Old Rosie. And I haven't been near that slag since December. Me and Rosie, let's get on it. Going back out with the rosy. Oh, I'm gonna piss bed. Ah, fall out with every fucker. <laughs> I've even got. I'm nibbling on Nobby's nuts. But look at that. Signal box in. So that place there used to be the signal box at Santon Sidings at the side of Scunthorpe Steelworks. Fucking hell, try and say that with a lisp. Santon Sidings, signal box, at the side of Scumport Steelworks. <laughs> Measures eight by eight, and it was just getting shit put in it, so they completely took it apart and relocated it here. And it serves as the pub, obviously, but it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a specialist cider house. They've got some right stuff in there. And even the old Rosie is on pump. Yeah, it's not in it's not in a box which is a shame because tramps queue up for that last pint of the bag that you have to squeeze out but she's a right place i like it here it's just nice you can sit and watch you can sit and watch the world go by apparently this was what was on the website or at least any of the uh the chisits and the comforts <laughs> how much is it a comfort weekend Anyway, cheers Pete. Next port of call 
is the beach coma. The place that was the making of me. Sad to say that, really. Crack on, cheers. And that is in recognition of the chap I told you about who uh, lost his legs on a railway accident and uh, with the compensation built what was later the Winter Gardens. This is to you sir, fair play to you. What a gent, Britain's finest. Some hefty units around here, fuck it. You can only fit two people in it at any given time. <laughs> Great place. It's nice that it's been saved though, isn't it? Look at it. She's a beauty. The signal box in. <clears throat> I forgot what a cheeky little bitch old Rosie was. <laughs> Might have to treat myself to a flagon later. Now that periphery fence there doesn't look too dissimilar to what it did. I remember back uh, when we used to go to the fitties, which is where we're heading, for holidays in the late 70s, very early 80s, this fence was like that, but you would see possibly a giraffe poking his fucking head over. It was Cleethorpe Zoo, which closed thankfully because zoos are just fucking wrong. And then it was reopened in 1993, as you'll see the picture, yeah, a lot of you will have been there. The most inaccurately named place in the world. Pleasure Island. <laughs> fucking shite island. It was fucking rubbish. Yeah. Open 93, closed 2010 due to lack of fucking interest. I've never understood um, the attraction of, of the things that are adrenaline driven I don't fucking get it I really don't I mean adrenaline to me the two things that excite me to the point of on edge are fishing <laughs> honestly and fucking bingo oh I do get on edge when I've got two left <laughs> let's see if we can still see in a little bit it's all derelict as fuck now yeah, Mother Nature's grabbed her back. Get on you, Mother. Right, come on. We need to get to the beach, Coma. Cleethorpe's Golf Club there. Shine. Don't bother. No trees. Ah, oh, stuff of legends. The starlight room at the beach, Coma. <laughs> And there's your smaller show bar for the lesser acts. But I was in there. So, let me tell you a story. 1990, what was it? 19, I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go get, I'm gonna go get comfy on that grassy knoll. Cause I've been walking a while and I think the story's worth telling and I need to get out of the way of him. <laughs> so come on, let's go on the grassy knoll. Hey, we can hook up. Uh, let's have a look. No dog shit. No dog shit. Yep, we're down. Just give us a minute. I'm halfway down memory lane. <laughs> so 1992, back end of 192. Um, in fact it would have been yeah it was it was the winter I was working in a shit job I think I was at Grant Lion Railway I was fucking useless I got sacked um, and I was singing in a band the mash band with my brother and Martin King and Jez Chester who not with us anymore he choked on his own vomit and Don Smith who was with us regardless of his fucking nine heart attacks. <laughs> he'll, he'll outlive us all him. So I got um, I got headhunted, for want of a better phrase, because our drummer knew a drummer in Cleethorpes, and they had a bit of a dilemma. 
so their singer uh, had, had uh, befallen a massive tragedy, a family tragedy, and he just couldn't face singing. Um, and they had all this work lined up. So they had two gigs initially and said, is there any chance you could come and have a go? I says, yeah, whatever. Bearing in mind, I'd gone from singing Pink Floyd, fucking Sex Pistols, Undertones, to putting a tuxedo on and doing Saturday Night Sequence dancing, <laughs> as well as a dance spot afterwards. So it was a huge contrast, but I had, uh, I had two weeks to learn 21 songs and I pissed it, I pissed it. Most of them were soul stuff initially because one was a private gig and then they went, our singer don't look as though he's coming back. Do you fancy doing the winter season with us and then the summer season? And I'd gone from, I was probably on about 120, 130 quid for a 40 hour week to six nights a week, two 45 minute spots, 200 quid cash, which I was astonished that I could get fucking paid for singing. It was a revelation. So I came over and we, we stayed here for about two and a half years, up until uh, my son, fair chance, my son was maybe med in that room. Yeah, and now he's med me a granddad and put years on me. But some of the top line acts on a Saturday, I mean, during the summer season, and I shit you not, there could be more people in the band, we we're a five piece band, than there was in the fucking audience in a room that holds 800, which I'm not allowed in today because it's, uh, it's private. Yeah, they're a bit precious about shit like that. But it was wonderful. So on a Saturday night, you had the visiting stars which even looking back, they were the kind of the ones that were fucking washed up for a good 10 years before they come to Cleggy. So the likes of Emil Ford, he was a big headed fucker, he was. Oh, what do you wanna make those eyes at me for? Shite, do your song, fuck off. Uh, who else was there? Judith Graham, she was lovely, Judith. I'm talking to her like she's one of my muckers. Um, she was from the Seekers, I believe. She was the only person he bought as a pine. Bernie Flint, brilliant. Uh, who was the bloke he used to do the ventriloquist with? Granddad. Can't remember his fucking name. He came anyway. But the one I distinctly remember was so funny. It was Saturday night and the uh, headline act was Jim Bowen. <laughs> and he did it as half comedy, half bullseye. So. It was my job to introduce Jim. Uh, he went, all right, lad, how are you? All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. He says, uh, you know my catchphrase? I says, got it, Jim, got it. So because it was Jim Bowen and because all the chizits and the fucking idiots thought, we've got to see him. The place was rammed to the rafters, 800 people. So I went out on stage and I says, please welcome. The man who coined the phrase. In the red, out the black. Drop your darts, you don't get them back. <laughs> I knew what the catchphrase was, but I thought, fuck you, Bowen. And he come walking past me going, that's wrong, that's wrong. I said, sorry, Jim, mate. Anyway, it was fucking rubbish. But this place was brilliant. Can you imagine going from 8, 40 hours a week, drilling holes in railways? You're just singing any old shite and getting 200 quid for it. Fucking top notch. So this is the beach coma. Next, we are heading to, which is behind me, Humberston Fitties, which sounds like a whorehouse, doesn't it? But it's uh, it's got a rich history and some wonderful places to uh, to show you. So wind's getting up a bit. Still pretty warm. Let's crack on. I ain't even had a fucking ice cream yet. Earlier, when I said I'm going to get an ice cream, all he had was Cornettos. I don't want pre-prepared shite. I want the fucking worst whippy shit you've got. Sort it. You're a fucking seaside. Right, we're nearly at Fitties, but I've got to show you a place here. Check this out. This little, <coughs> this little crossing. So about two years ago, I was coming from that direction after doing a ramble um, 
where I was metal detecting. Very important. Quite a concealed entrance, so I'm coming from that way to go that way. There's a lot of people here motioning to go over and then they turn to go down there. So I carried on. It doesn't matter about the whys and wherefores of how the lady in question going over the crossing ended up under my front bumper of my van. It don't matter whose fault it was. I was fucking horrified. So she's in a, a really robust shop mobility wagon. And I just fucking heard a clatter. And I remember seeing her in the wagon and then not in it. So fuck, fuck. There's all these people running over to her. And uh, for about 20 or 30 seconds, I'll be honest with you, I was absolutely fucking shocked. I didn't know what was going on. So I, uh, I, I sort of, well, I put the handbrake on and I got out. And uh, paramedics come within about a minute. So she's laid on the floor a fucking, the mobility wagon, not a fucking scratch on it, front of my van scratches all over it. And the old wagon, right robust beast it was. So she's laid on the floor and <laughs> the paramedic says, right, what's your name, love? She went, oh, uh, uh, Pat. And fair play to you, Pat, for the end of this story. They said, right, Pat, Pat. So I'm stood over her and she's looking up. She's, she's quite dazed, obviously. It says, Pat, can you feel your legs? Wait for this, it's fucking comedy gold. And it happened, she went, I, I haven't been ill to feel them for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> and bless her, we were there for about 15 minutes. They sat her up and, uh, and all she was bothered about was fucking me. She was bothered about how I felt. I mean, how good is that? Bless you, Pat. If that was, I don't know, somebody half your age, you've had fucking whiplash, I'd have caused you to have spinal injuries forever, even though you fucking didn't have, and I'd have been paying it off the rest of my life. So yeah, oh, it was, I'll always, I'll take that to my grave, it was so funny. Pat, can you feel your legs? I ain't been able to feel them for 20 years. <laughs> Love you, Pat. I nearly went the next day to um, find out where she lived to take her a bunch of flowers and one of my CDs, but I thought, fucking hell, she's been injured enough. <laughs> Cheers, Pat. Welcome to Humberston Fitties. Look at them. Look at them. This place here, sensational. Look at it. It's just an amazing place. Some of these original plots are from the 1920s. I mean, look at the chimney on the piss there. That place is superb. It's the fucking time capsule. I'm going to tell you more about it, but I need to go up and find. Um, I need to go up and find a place called Seymour's. What it's like. It's like building regs never existed down here. They just built what the fuck they wanted. And these fetch extortionate prices now. And it's a natural conservation area as well. So it does get looked after. Beautiful. I mean, there's modern places, look. So you've got that, which could have been built five years ago. And then you've got that. Oh, look at the blossoms. I do love cherry blossoms, but they only last about a week. Oh, yeah. Look at that. How good is that? They'll have been unchanged for at least 40, 50 years, most of these places. Wonderful. Very, very unique, I think. Can't think of anywhere else in the UK that's got this. And I'll tell you the history about it in a bit and bore the shit out of you. But more importantly, I've got to find a place that's no longer there. Well, it is there, but it's not open. So come on, jog on, Baxter. Mind the cars. Look at them. 
Okay, wonderful. I'm still in bloody, I'm still back down memory lane. So I've just nipped down to where uh, I'm still on the fitties. And this place here, that there, used to be called Seymour's, which was uh, a guy called Seymour. It was called Seymour Morris. And he was the loveliest, loveliest man you'd probably ever meet. Absolute gem of a bloke. I think he years later. I think he actually was one of the last owners of the uh, of the uh, Winter Gardens. I believe so. Yeah, lovely, lovely man. Played golf with his son years later, who was absolute fucking cock, silver spoon wanker. But uh, the thing I remember that was 1994, and if you did a midweek gig, so it was a holiday camp. Uh, concert hall really and it was brilliant a fantastic atmosphere but you had to set up behind a big screen because <laughs> if it was midweek gig you couldn't go on stage or have a sound check till fucking Coronation Street had finished <laughs> and then over here which is now a it's now a play area let's have a look so all that's a play area well, back in the 70s, 80s, that roughly there was a pub called the Foreshore, which I'll show you a picture of now. The Foreshore. Uh, and you didn't have to be... You didn't have to be a site member to go in, in the Foreshore. So uh, many Sundays we'd leave Scunny. This is before the motorways was open as well. So we'd leave Scunny, you'd have to go on the back road to Laceby all the way through and down to here. So my, dr my dad would drive us here and get absolutely cunted in the foreshore. And my mum would drive home, which sounds the ideal scenario. But it wasn't till years later when I questioned her. She never had a fucking license. <laughs> she said, I says, I think that's illegal mum. And she went, well, it, it didn't matter back then. I think if you'd have got pulled on, but bearing in mind Dad was a fucking driving instructor, I think that might have been a little bit wrong. Yeah, so the foreshore and Seymour's. Brilliant. It's changed drastically. Yeah, everything changes. Why does it all have to change? Anyway, last port of call next. And it's fucking... Dangerous. I mean, look at that. That is fucking sensational. And they've even got funny little names like uh, I've just seen one called Generic, which is Jan and Eric. Another one called It'll Do. Look at that, it's fucking tin roof for God's sake. And another one, big sign over it saying, where the magic happens. <laughs> what a place. What a place. I'm going to get perched up in a minute and tell you the history of it. Because it is fascinating. Particularly if you're dull and can't know what else to do. <laughs> Come on. Let's head towards the danger. Alrighty. We've reached the end, the Humbermouth Yacht Club. And I've walked all this way, and look! I got ice cream! I got ice cream! Brilliant. Proper shit, look at it dribbling every fucking way. The last two places I've been, I didn't sell shit with the ice cream, they had Cornettos. I said, I'm not a fucking tourist. Oh, this bastard's going all over. <laughs> so, have I got some on my mouth? What, what there? <laughs> fucking hell, I'm gonna have wasps after me. Oh, look at me, it's all over the fucking shop. Oh, this is going wrong. Anyway, fit is. Fitties started life as an army encampment. 
for uh, World War One. And then at the end of World War One, a lot of the soldiers who were stationed here, looking out for Jerry over the horizon, they brought tents and shit. And uh, because they enjoyed the sea air, these people were from all over the country, and they enjoyed the sea air for the little time they were stationed here. So, as always, you don't just get one or two, do you? A lot of them started coming because they felt the benefit of the health. And what's recognised now, oh, here I come. Why is it whenever you give a dog ice cream, he never goes like that fucker, does it? Oh, that shot up then. So, so what we recognise now is PTSD. But back then they said, get a tent and fuck off to fitties. Then they started bringing bigger vehicles, like um, some of the old railway carriages were left over, so they were camping out in them and tying them up a bit. And it grew and grew and grew. So that is the history of Fitties. Wonderful place. And then it got recommissioned during World War Two. There's two forts. Bullfort, and I can't remember the name of the other one. <coughs> Bullfort, I can show you in a bit. Uh, and they were to stop the uh, the German U-boat. <laughs> oh, I ain't had an ice cream for years. I know why now. Look at that fucking state of that. Uh, but this place here, I wanted to tell you about. Hopefully Big Ray's going to send me some video footage that she's still got where she nearly died If you ask her if you ask me she got stuck in some fucking mud So A couple of years ago We um, We were looking after horrible bobs Remember horrible Bob from earlier? You know Lincolnshire's top lover we're looking after horrible Bob's dog, Teddy. Lovely little fella. Bit yappy, but lovely little fucking state of that, look. So we thought, welcome to Cleggy. Nip down Fitty's end. Loads of space to have a bit of a roam. Well, let me just show you this. So it looks quite picturesque and flat and expansive. And there's still people walking everywhere now. So we started off roughly there where they're walking. We walked all the way around Water's Edge and came back. And then halfway back over there, Big Ray wasn't as tall as she was a minute before because she was up to her fucking knees in quicksand. <laughs> I laughed. I'm, I managed to because I'm quite stealth. I managed to run off really quickly and left her with the fucking dog. And the dog's going. <laughs> he didn't know what the fuck was going on. And Big Ray's first words were, I went to get my camera out to film it. Top comedy moment, she said, you fucking film this, I'm finishing with you. Which in hindsight, I missed an opportunity there. But, very, very dangerous. Even recently, people have had to be rescued in the last year. Horses have nearly uh, got stuck as well. There's some serious shifting quicksand. If you ever come down here and think, oh, that's a piece of piss, I'll walk down to the water's edge at your fucking peril. I'll tell you now, because it is dangerous. And she went, <coughs> when she got out, because she fell over at one point, fucking face planted, complete mud and shit caked up, best fucking rigger boots they'd gone <laughs> and uh, she says it's fucking dangerous that there should be signs up I says there was the sank <laughs> oh god it was fucking funny it was very funny but very scary at the same time she said we got back in the van and she had to take her jeans off and come back to Scunny in just a knickers <laughs> And they weren't even, they weren't even nice, oh yeah, come. they weren't even nice knickers, they weren't like 
if you're trying to impress a new boyfriend knickers no there were knickers that you've got when you've been together a while and you're not fucking bothered <laughs> oh look at that fucking kicked up don't last bit don't last bit so hopefully I'll have some uh, video footage of that but I never told you why Cleethorpes is called Cleethorpes two words Clee comes from the old word for clay and thoughts is a small outcrop so it's the clay built of the outlying small outcrop clee thoughts fantastic i like these look at all these up in memory of alan white ron fletcher mum and dad at twilight billy boy I like them. I think I might have a bench when I took the six. But I'm just going to have a minute to myself because um, you can't believe what a month it's been. I'm not going to go into details. Some of it's been sheer bad luck. Some of it's been big old fucking dollops of life. Take a bit of that. But I'm about up to fucking here and beyond. So this was much needed today. So I'm going to have a minute to myself on the memory bench and uh, see what we've got to see on the way back. I'm going to take the uh, the coastal route on the way back, but I am more than ready for spam fried chips and beans on a tray with scraps. Over and out from the memory bench. Ta-da! Now there is Hale Sand Fort. Finished a year after World War One. What fucking use was that? And that was sold in 2018 for 117,000 pounds. And further in the distance, you can see there, that's Bull Fort, and that sold for 149,000. Originally bought as a drug rehabilitation center. <laughs> yeah, they were gonna put them on there. You had no chance of getting off your fucking tits, did you? Two seriously impressive structures built to house in World War I, 200 troops apiece. Wow. Quite ominously looming, aren't they? Love to get to it, but fuck that. Them two people there, where are they? That's roughly where Big Ray sank. Yeah, it was like watching the Bismarck go down. Just stepped into the hedgerow. Hopefully you can hear that. Listen. Not that fucking tractor. Fresh life that is. Baby birds singing in the nests. <sighs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Life affirming. Much needed. So I'm walking the, uh, the shoreline back. Check these out. Are you ready for this? Some of these are really expensive as well. Here we go. Look at all them. Not about them, they're ten a penny. Yeah, the old chalets. Beautiful. I seriously think they are cool as fuck. Oh, there's one for sale. I'm gonna check out there how much it costs. I mean, how do you even fucking get to them? So let's have a look. That one there. Have a guess how much you think that is, and I'll do some research and bang it on. Right, sweet. Hey, who? Here's one for you, rail enthusiasts. Is he going to give us a toot? Bloody bollocks, you miserable bastard. Look at that, all them families looking fucking miserable. Ah, 
He's happy. Yeah, they're happy. Oh, first day. Good luck with that. You'll be fucking split up in six months. <sighs> hey, just a thought. Look at that sound there. Stop looking. Stop looking. Listen. Beware of trains. Can you imagine if that letter I wasn't there? Beware of trams. Fucking hell, that's even scarier. Can you imagine? 20 ston below, it's called Barbara and Charlotte and fucking Yvette and Chloe running at you with massive hands and fucking Adam's apples. Yeah, beware of trans. Alrighty, nearly back at the car, ready for me, uh, ready for me chips and stuff. So on a sombre note, a bit of a story for you. September 1969, a party of four, three young girls, and their guide left, let me show you, left the riding school at the far end and went across the beach. Very nice, very nice. And as we've told you, that place shifts, changes. Uh, what happened that day was the fog came in. They all got disorientated. All four members of the party died and three of the horses. Yeah. It's a local story, very, very, very sad. So, just to say, it all looks amazing out there. It all looks like, oh, I'm gonna have a walk right out. The tides and stuff shift here like you would not believe. Be careful. Hmm. <sighs> I'm back in the car. Look. They didn't have a spam fritter for fuck's sake. I got fish cake. Didn't want fish cake. I wanted spam fritter. Anyway. Uh, I've enjoyed that today. It was, uh, it was called for. So it was nice to have you along with us. So uh, get out there, enjoy life, it passes very, very quickly, and it's taken even quicker. Um, that's about it from me, till next time, and as always, um, if you've been offended, fucking grow up. See you later, I haven't had chips since December, so I'm chowing down, goodbye. Ta-da! Right, <clears throat> for those of you who don't believe there's quicksand at Cleethorpes, look at the fucking state of this. Glasses everywhere. Jacket. Fell over twice in it, at least. Be careful out there, people. Teddy's alright, aren't you? Look <laughs> at that! 200 quid boots, 300 quid <laughs> well, jacket. And she's supposed to be a fucking adult. <laughs> Look at the jeans. Look, he caked up. She fell over twice. Nearly had to call the Coast Guard. That's it. I need to fucking find myself an adult. <laughs>